Hi. So um, I've been watching the talks online. They've been a great set of talks. Um, this talk relates to the previous talk, um, and it's about technology as well. So I have a job which I really love. So my job is to create a better future, um, especially in the educational space. And I'm going to talk about some ideas that we've had and others on the application of blockchain for higher education. But before I talk about uh, blockchain technology and say what it is, I want to talk about one of my other favorite technologies in the education space. And that's the blackboard. There it is. So um, slates have been used since ancient times in Sumeria and, and Babylonia for people to write. But it was in 1801 that a headmaster and geography teacher at the school in Edinburgh put a big slate in front of the class, uh, a blackboard. And that transformed how teaching was done in that class. So for the first time, the students could see what the teacher was thinking. He could draw on the blackboard or write on the blackboard, and the students could see what, it, what, the, what, was, what the thoughts were in a visual form. So in a sense, the blackboard was a, a sense of shared knowledge and truth for that classroom. Now, a blockchain, I'm going to argue, can serve as a global source of truth and knowledge across the internet. So um, this technology is best known as the underpinning of Bitcoin, which you, you may have heard about, so which is a cryptocurrency. It was created in 2008 as a bunch of computer scientists having a formal response to the global financial crisis. So maybe a bit arrogantly, they said, maybe computer scientists can do better than bankers after looking for, the, for global finances. It, it's different to a standard currency in that it's not backed by any country or any nation. It's just a set of computers working together. It's now worth over $40 billion. Um, dollars, and there is no central control. There is no organization or central controller, just a set of computers that are networked. Since 2008, lots of other cryptocurrencies have emerged. Um, and next year, um, Facebook are hoping to launch one of their own, Libra. So there's, there's a lot of excitement and actually some concerns about that. So um, at its core, this is just a ledger. It's a, a global ledger which everyone can see for a set of transactions. And that's why banks are interested, because all a bank is, at its very simplest, is a ledger. So your bank balance depends on all of the transactions that you've had, all of the payments. And banks spend a lot of energy in reconciling their ledgers overnight. So this will save banks tens of billions of pounds, and that's why they like that technology. Um, there are various elements of a blockchain which make it trusted. This is the most technical part of the talk. There's not much technical, um, but this is the most technical part. So um, there are three things I'll, I'll talk about, really. One is, for any computer file, you can create a thumbprint, which is unique to the file. So it's called a hash. So if anybody tampers with that file, you know, because the thumbprint won't work anymore. Um, and also, it preserves privacy, because you don't want to put your file on the blockchain, because it's personal. You put the thumbprint on the file, and then people can say things about that. So a blockchain is simply a set of blocks which are connected through this thumbprinting mechanism. So you, anyone can tell if anything has been tampered with by bad people because the thumbprints won't work anymore. As well as putting data on the blockchain, we can put what are called smart contracts. So these are small pieces of computer code which can represent, in principle, financial or legal contracts. Once it's on the blockchain, it's there forever. Everything is digitally signed, saying who, who put it there. And it, if a smart contract is there, it will run forever with no bankers or no lawyers in the loop. Now, in contrast to the applications that you use on your um, smartphone or your uh, tablet or, or laptop, it's what's called peer-to-peer, -peer, which means you're not accessing some central database that you don't know who controls it. But everyone who's within the blockchain, and anyone can join uh, many blockchains, everyone gets a complete copy of all of the data. So everybody can check what everybody is doing uh, um, to make sure nothing bad is happening. OK, that's the end of the technical bit. So um, I often give uh, um, explanations of uh, this technology. And people often ask me, OK, I understand the bits, but where is it? Where is the blockchain? So um, who here in the audience has a smartphone on them? Yeah, quite a lot of people. So we could run a blockchain as a company on our smartphones. So whoever would agree, 
we could say, okay, let me put a, a blockchain in your project. And the companies would be exactly what's running on our phones. We could, for example, set up a competitor to Facebook, set up our own social media platform, and then we would decide the rules, nobody else. We may say, we don't allow any pictures of cats. We don't like cats. We allow advertising, but only from ethical advertisers. We could have rules on how to change the rules, rules on how to, people can join and leave, but it will be up to us. So if, anybody, if you want to think about where's the blockchain running, it's running in your pocket. Now, what has any of this to do with education? So blockchains are very good at recording things, because things are digitally signed and things are there forever. So in education, we use it for certificates. So imagine if I had a conversation with one of you at lunch today, and I say, I have lots of qualifications, and you say, well, I don't believe you. Well, what I'd have to do today, I'd have to go outside, get in my car, drive home, go up to my loft, go around the boxes, pull out a certificate, and show it to you, and say, look, here's my PhD certificate. Um, uh, from the Open University, so it proves I'm, uh, I have a PhD from the Open University from 87, and I was very popular as a baby, so there are lots of names uh, that I have. <laughs> um, now, so it, it, it improves verification, so companies will pay 50 to 80 pounds to verify each individual person they're hiring for each certificate, so that could be a lot of money, and it reduces fraud. There are lots of famous fraud cases that I could talk about. There was a dean at MIT who had to resign after 30 years because she lied about her qualifications. There was a chief executive at, at um, Yahoo who had to do the same. There was a, a, uh, a leader of a very big country who closed down the database of where he studied because um, reporters were looking there. So, so we can um, uh, um, reduce that. There was an investi investigation from someone from the FBI that claimed that half of the PhD certificates given out in the US are fake. So now, another thing we can do is we can change what, uh, what certificates are. So here's a, a certificate, we call it a badge. It's a physical certificate that we gave away at the summer school. So the students would carry these around. And, and they, they would wear it. I won't wear it because it will interfere with the microphone. And the students had to complete seven tasks. It was in an AI course. And every time they completed a task, the, the tutor would uh, uh, wipe the badge and it would change color. So they would have a physical representation of what they've learned, and it will be recorded forever on, on the blockchain. Um, now, another thing that's important for us is identity. So I have all my names on there, but what's the digital identity uh, um, that we're going to tie all the certificates to? Now, there was a famous meme in 93 on the internet, nobody knows you're a dog. And it was about, well, what's your real identity on the internet? How does your real identity tie to the internet? identity. So, um, so imagine that we want to support learning over life, over your lifetime. So you'll be learning at many places, at many universities, maybe you'll be learning at online companies, maybe you'll be learning at work. Well, I would predict that practically everyone in the audience has a digital identity. You have an email address, but probably that comes from your employer or from your host university where you're studying or from a large tech company. So it's somehow it's not really yours. With blockchains, we can create what are called self-sovereign identities. Basically equivalent to you writing on a piece of paper, my name is John Demang, and then people would sign that. So everything would be under your control. So as a previous speaker, taking control of your data, this would be complete control of your online identity and control of your, all your digital credentials. Um, so one of the things we can do more radically with this technology is create what I call decentralized autonomous universities. So using these smart contracts, people have already created what are called decentralized autonomous organizations or DAOs. And some of these have been running with hundreds of millions of dollars in between. So you can take a university, so at its simplest there are students who are studying um, with online resources, studying courses, there are various experts who make materials, experts who teach, and we can replace all those with uh, um, smart contracts to organize this. So you can decentralize and you can automate um, various bits. And, and, and I'll explain uh, what I mean more in, in, in the following slides. So one thing that we've, we've been looking at is um, assessment. So if you study, normally somebody will assess you. But we ask, why does the assessment always have to be at the same place as the place that you are studying? So some people complain, if I'm assessing a student, then Mabel will hide from me what they don't know. But as a teacher, I want to know what they don't know. 
So here is something that we did in the corporate education space. So uh, when and people learn at work, often they leave work for a few days, um, learn something and come back. The US spent nearly $90 billion on this um, last year, but only 10% of, work, of uh, workplace training is ever applied in the workplace, studies have shown. So here what we did is we have assessment happening in the workplace. I'll just start the movie. So in this, in this um, uh, movie, there are three workers and they each have a reputation bar. How good are their soft skills in communication and collaboration and problem solving? And they get um, their own currency, their own currency for learning. And they can spend coins on each other if they think someone has displayed good organizational skills or good problem solving skills. And you see uh, um, Kevin's giving um, some coins to, to James in this. So then the assessment is happening in the workplace. And behind the scenes, smart contracts automatically give out certificates when somebody's reputation bar is over a certain level. So another thing that we're doing is we're creating a uh, national and international blockchain for all accreditations that people acquire. So we're doing one for the UK in one project and we're collaborating with a lot of European partners to create one for the whole of Europe. So this will be a service for everyone where instead of having to drive in your car and drive home to your loft, you could just pull out your phone and say, look, here are my certificates. You could keep it private because it'd only be the thumbprints and not the real certificates on the blockchain. And also policymakers would know um, how are my citizens in my region or my country internationally doing? Do they have the skills that we need? Do we have people who are, uh, who are qualified to be nurses? How do they match industrial demand? Another thing we can do with this type of thing is support employability and employment. So here what we've done is people are getting lots of certificates as they are learning in, in different places and we know the skills associated with those certificates. Then we have an AI tool which can read adverts of jobs which are online. So you read the jobs which are online and you match the skills in the jobs to the skills that the uh, um, particular person is having. So this is a system where um, Michelle is looking for a job in the area of data science. The system will find jobs for which she already has all the skills for and show them to her on a map, show them where they are. So that's the top part of the panel. In the bottom part of the panel, there are jobs for which she's nearly qualified for and there are some skills missing, and then the system will find the, the courses which are online, which he can study to fill in the skills gap. So this is for us is the first step towards an AI automated career coach uh, and course recommendation system. So again, it's beginning to automate and decentralize parts of universities. So um, our um, current challenge we're looking at is with, with this technology, we can really make higher education very, very agile. Um, so we can teach anywhere. And so we're looking at what I call um, pop-up education. So providing really um, uh, high quality education to the most disadvantaged. And by disadvantage, I mean training teachers for the um, over 260 million children globally who don't go to school, supplying education to the 70 million people who were displaced last year, supplying education to people in refugee camps. I heard a shocking statistic a, a few weeks ago that the average time that someone spends in a refugee camp is 17 years. So with this technology, we can provide a pop-up university connecting people to high quality online resources, connecting people to high, to high quality educators, uh, all through these smart contracts. So I think that um, this technology, blockchain technology, we, will be as transformative as Blackboard, or maybe even more so. Creating a, a, a global source of truth and a platform for high quality education that's really accessible to anyone at any place at any time. Thank you.